Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. there and thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Relationship Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. My name is Jessica Ko and I'll be your host today. So far this week, I have been obsessed with protein shakes for some reason. Like every day I have to have one for lunch and each day I, I, cause I use like a Quest Vanilla and it has been so wonderful for just blending with ice and it mixes so well. It's like a milkshake. And I'm like, ooh, healthy mix milkshake. Let's go. And I do different flavors like every day. So maybe I'm just crazy. But if you also have like a, a an obsession with protein milkshakes, tell me on Twitter or Instagram because I'm I, I don't want to be alone here, you know? So today we have a as always, wonderful show for you. We are going to talk about long distance relationships and we are also going to talk about mindful texting, which also kind of ties into mindful relationships. And finally, we're going to talk about why don't we give boys flowers, which is kind of something I mentioned in the last podcast. So stay tuned for that and let's get into it. So long distance relationships. Um, otherwise known as LDR because long distance relationship is just way too many syllables to keep on saying over and over again. But this is an intimate relationship between two partners and they are basically geographically separated from each other. And they are separate from lack of face-to-face contact. And clearly this is something that over the years has been made a lot more easy because we have things like FaceTime and easier messengers and just like even VR chat. It makes it so much easier for us to communicate with people all the way on the other side of the globe. But still, there is a lot of that missing physical connection and being able to spend time together. Now, long distance relationships, LDRs, are most most prevalent among college students, surprisingly. And I mean, it's not that surprising because in college, that's where we see a lot of traveling, a lot of international students, and a lot of studying abroad programs. So these long distance relationships constitute about 25 to 50% of all relationships in college. And that's completely insane because I mean, even if you're there for the full four years, after four years of knowing each other, you're going to be countries apart, usually. And on the other the other opportunity, there is students that have come from high school and they're trying to maintain a relationship while they're in college and they're states apart. They're on the other side of the U.S. or whatever country you're in. So it becomes this weird, weird relationship where you're used to seeing each other all the time and you're used to being in school and you can just, you know, go to each other's house and you go to McDonald's at 11 p.m. or 2 in the morning. And now it's, okay, we're going to FaceTime and there's this three-hour difference. So long-distance relationships are really, they have their problems, but they also have their advantages, which is something we're going to talk about in the show today. And honestly, I think that there needs to be more research done on long distance relationships because so many people are unwilling to be a part of a relationship just because they are scared of being in an LDR. 
and they don't feel like it's going to be something that's going to work out because of that distance. But there's been a lot of research and just surveys done that has proven that it works out. But I think that more more focus needs to be put on this problem so that people can see that this actually is something that can work out or that other people can see that it's not something that's going to work for them particularly. And LDRs are something that are for very specific people. And you never know if you're that person until you get into one because it's something that you need to be able to handle. You need to be able to handle being apart from your partner. You need to be individually independent because you're going to be doing your own thing almost all of the time with that little integration of messaging each other or you know, FaceTiming, playing online games together, or those so often visits. And specifically, when you're in different countries, there comes that that hardship of having different time zones. And there's so many relationships where one person will be going to bed just as the other person is waking up. So you have to be able to be independent and not completely rely on your communication with that other person in order to be able to feel good about both yourself and your relationship. Because if you are totally dependent on constant communication with your partner, those interactions are going to come more slowly and become more infrequent, especially if you're dating somebody outside of your time zone. And more specifically, more specifically, somebody outside of your country on the other side of the hemisphere, it just becomes very difficult to deal with if you can't rely on yourself and if you need to rely on constantly communicating with your partner. Now keep in mind that long distance relationships often has the the hardness, the burden of financial situations where if you want to go visit each other, you have to consider the amount of money it's going to cost you, whether it's $600 for a plane trip across you know the country or it's $1,600 across the the see it's just going to be a big financial issue because you have to think about where you're going to stay and if you're going to stay with them if you're going to stay in an airbnb or with some family it is going to be something that will cost you a little bit um specifically too if you want to invest in these really nice dates for you and your so and you're going to be going on dates in the time, say you're spending a week together and you want to spend a week, you know, on these amazing dates, you're going to go travel around their area or your area with each other, you're going to do a little tour, some very romantic stuff, gifts, it becomes so expensive so fast and there's all these expenses you don't even realize are going to come to. Like you need, especially people that are in different countries, you need to start thinking about gifts you're going to bring for their family and it's very, very difficult to deal with. And let's say that you do go and visit your partner in a different location. Let's say that it's a long period of time you're going to have a difficult struggle. So say you stay there for like a month or something, you're going to have a major struggle trying to maintain your relationships with your friends at home as well as try to make new friends outside of your own country and into a new country or in another state and in this new area that you're not used to. It's a totally different community. And a lot of the time, people in different countries or even in different states are going to act differently than what you're used to. So you need to be really open-minded about the friends you're going to make and the opportunities you're going to have. And just keep in mind that there is going to be some anxiousness that results from being far away from each other. You're not going to be aware of what they're doing all the time and you're going to have those gaps where you're like, oh my God, are they out seeing other women? And they might not be. They're probably not if they're committed to you. They're going to be out with their friends or just doing homework or doing work, whatever it is that they do. But there's other times where it could be somebody that you're like, 
oh my God, they're out partying, they're out finding other women or finding other men, and it's it becomes very stressful. So you have to be prepared for, for that kind of gap in trust, and you need to talk it out with your partner and be confident in your relationship to be able to talk it out with your partner and figure out, okay, this relationship is steady, we're not going to be seeing anybody else, and we're going to be unique and committed to each other. And just know that when you do have those face-to-face interactions, when you do finally get to spend some time with each other, you might have a lot of stress on yourself for trying to make the most of the time you have together. And your partner may be expressing that they also have that need for having the best interaction together. So once you once you do commit to a distance relationship, you should try to talk about what you want to do when you're together and what you want to do when you're apart because your expectations for what you do when you're together can be very different depending on your own personalities and what you seek in a relationship. And LDRs are significantly more stressful when you're a part of the military because your communications are very limited, especially if you're in training or if you are actually touring and out of country. And there's just so much because you're constantly worrying about that person and you're worrying about your relationship at hand, if they still feel the same way, if they're still alive if they're hurt and there's so much to worry about and even on the other hand if you're in the military and you're you're with somebody who's on the home front they're at home you're worried that if they feel the same way about you if they're still feeling like they want to continue the relationship with you if they're lonely if they're out seeking other companionship and it's it's very stressful for both parties but The good news is that there are ways to get around that and there are ways to feel like you can be in a relationship, which is something we're going to get into later in the episode. So coming up after a short break, I'm going to talk about some of the, not some of, many of the long distance relationships that I've been in and some of the struggles that have ensued, some of the interesting facts of being in a long distance relationship. So stay tuned for that. The GSMC Sex Podcast is a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. TSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. Download the GSMC Sex Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you can find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Thank you so much for staying tuned into the GSMC Relationship Podcast. My name is Jessica, and welcome back to our next segment of the show. I hope you had some time to relax and enjoy your little break in between. We just talked about long-distance relationships and what it is, what it looks like, and some of the different circumstances that can arise from a long-distance relationship. Now I'm going to go in and talk about how I have dealt with long-distance relationships and some of the different relationships that I have had. So since I have graduated college, I have been going back and forth between South Korea And in that time, I have had plenty of boyfriends, both in Korea and in the United States. And my 
first boyfriend in Korea I actually never met. He was in the military at the time, and he had somewhat of a maybe a depression issue or an anxiety issue. Either way, it just didn't work out for us, and I never actually met him. Now, moving forward, I met a, another pen pal, and we ended up talking for about four months until we finally met, and we... We met in Seoul, South Korea at the airport, and he picked me up there, and it worked out because it was my first week in Seoul, and I was just spending a week there and touring. It was really fun because he got to show me all these places. It was my first experience in South Korea, and outside of my own country, actually. So it was nice to be able to tour with somebody who... It was like going on a date, but going on a date with somebody you... In a place you have never been before and you had nothing nothing to know about the cultural ideas. So it was very exciting. But then I went back to the U.S. for about a month. And that month was really hard for us to be apart. Um, actually, it wasn't that hard. It was, it was just kind of like, okay, I can't wait to go back again. And I can't wait to see you again. And it was helpful because we knew that I was going to go back. And when I did go back... It was kind of like, okay, you're here permanently. Because at the time, it was assumed that I was going to be there for the rest of the time that I was, you know, for however long. Maybe forever. We didn't know at that point because I was trying to get a job there. And and it became kind of monotonous. The relationship lost its uniqueness and its, its specialness. And he stopped seeing me as somebody that was maybe hard to obtain or just somebody that they actually he actually had to pursue and have an effort for maintaining a relationship and our relationship deteriorated over time and I lost interest in him because it didn't feel like he cared about me anymore and I ended up coming back to the U.S. in which right after he we actually ended up breaking up but I've had other long-distance relationships that didn't end as badly. So after coming back to the United States, I ended up going to college in Arizona State after a while. And I had been at ASU for quite some time. That was my, you know, my second college after community college. And I was doing online classes, and this was my only semester actually spent on campus. And... I actually met somebody through Tinder who I enjoyed spending time with. We went on lots of adventures together, and we really had a great time. Never was there a time where we were toxic towards each other or just didn't enjoy each other's or company. But once I you know, graduated from that semester, I planned to go back to South Korea for my tutoring in the summer which is a job I continued throughout the years. And when I went back, I realized that I wasn't actually in love with this person, this guy. I was just in love with our relationship. So giving yourself that distance kind of helps to realize that you either do or do not love this person. You realize that you are in love with them or you're in love with just having that company, having somebody around you and adore you. So it was about within one month that we actually ended up breaking up and I started to pursue other people in South Korea. That same summer in Seoul, I met a bartender who I, I actually asked him for his cacao talk, which is like the... You the, that's the universal way of messaging in South Korea, and I wrote it on a napkin with a lipstick pencil or a lip lip pencil. <laughs> so I had asked him for his cacao talk, and he and I just gave googly eyes all night. It was so funny. It was so ridiculous, and we ended up going on a date together, and we dated for about a week. He asked me out, and he's like, yes, I want to, even though I know you're going to go back to America next week, because it was towards the end of my visit. He said, I want to be in a relationship. So he asked me out, and I agreed. 
And literally, as I was sitting in the airport, he slowly started to stop texting me. And by the time I got home, he completely ghosted me. It was a 16-hour flight, and he completely ghosted me by the time I got home. So some people just cannot deal with that long-distance relationship. It's so ridiculous, but it's true. People will will set themselves up for success. They'll think like, yes, I got this, and then immediately bail. And it's so sad (laughs) to see it go like that because one person is likely to really get their hopes up while the other one is just like, meh, this is fine for a week, and then just completely be over it. After that, I had a friend who had been dating the same guy since high school, And they went off to college in different states, and it worked out for about a year. They came back, and they rejoiced in their love for each other, and it was wonderful. We all spent New Year's together. It was so nice just to see them because they they clearly did care about each other. And then my female friend went back to college, and her boyfriend went back to college, And about a month later, after seeing each other, it became this toxic relationship where he expressed no opinions, and he started going out and seeing other women without telling her, and she was at home in her in her dorm and just wondering, like, what is going on? Why is he not talking to me? So I think it's a lot about that communication and that willingness to let go. Because we have this thought in our minds that we want to be like our high school sweethearts. We want to be in that relationship forever and ever, and we, we have to strive for it. But at the same time, we're too lazy to actually put effort into that relationship. We don't, we don't want to really be in that relationship, but we're trying to maintain it because we have this sense that we need to. We have this sense of commitment that we've spent so much time on this relationship, then why not keep going into it, even though we still want to be out of it? And that same thing happened for me where I met somebody in Feb, January, January of 2019 on New Year's Eve. We met and we had the most amazing relationship and after a month I had to come home from South Korea and I went to the U.S. and we spent four months apart. We were talking every day. It was such, it was just like a really good relationship. We never argued. Nothing was ever toxic about the relationship. We never had any, any, any animosity towards each other and never worried about each other cheating. And then one day I well no then I chose to came back to Korea to just to come visit him and after about a week and a half there there was a day where he was kind of being weird and we went out we went out at one night and had dinner together and then the next night he the next day he's like oh I feel sick so let's not do anything tonight and I said that's fine and then the day after that I went to visit my friend in another city And he wasn't answering me, and I thought, well, that's really weird. I hope he's okay. And then later that night, (laughs) actually one one in the morning after that day, he messaged me that he wanted to break up without any warning, any any signals at all. And at that point, it was no no longer a long distance relationship. So the long distance part worked out for us, but the in person part, for whatever reason, triggered him, and he no longer wanted to be in that relationship. So really, there are no good or bad long-distance relationships. I went to South Korea to go pursue my degree, and I was still with my boyfriend after like five or six months, and we were totally in it together. We were going to make it, and then because of COVID, I had to come back after a week, so we experienced one week of awesome non-well, awesome long-distance relationship, which turned into an even awesomer not long distance relationship. So it can work out for some people. It doesn't work out for everybody. Coming up after the break, we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of long distance relationships. Be sure to stay tuned for that and I will see you in a moment. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. 
There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. and welcome back. Thank you for hanging out with me today on the GSMC Relationship Podcast. We just discussed a little bit about long-distance relationships, what they are, and some of my own personal experiences with them. Now we're going to move on to some of the benefits of being in a long-distance relationship. Yes, there are good things about being away from your partner, whether you have just met them, whether you've been together for a long time, or whether you have never met them. There are so many ways that being apart can actually develop and help your relationship. It can make it very sustainable, and this is actually a therapist and doctor-backed information and it's just a really interesting thing because you are going to see that long distance relationships can actually support your own relationship. Now, if you we've heard it so many times, but if you've never been in a long distance relationship, you'll hear if you become in one, if you can survive the distance, you can survive anything. That is, if you are far away from each other, you're going to build up this relationship that is so concrete and just, it's a steel relationship. You, There's nothing that can penetrate it. And once you finally come back together, all of your other issues, you're going to be like, Man, that's nothing. That is nothing compared to this distance and this time we have spent without each other. You're going to feel invincible as a couple. You're also going to increase your ability to actually talk to each other, whether it be by messaging, whether it be by texting, even face call or face chat, um, video chat. It's going to be so much easier for you to communicate when, because you learn how to do it when you're apart, you become so much better at it when you're together. For my own personal experience, I met my boyfriend in person. We were together and hung out together in person for about five to six months. And he would always tell me I was the worst texter ever. And I was like, I have no idea what you mean. And then I spent a week in South Korea. And over that time, I was like, okay, I totally see what you mean. Because we were actually really far apart. We were in different time zones. And it meant more to communicate with each other and to send meaningful text messages, to spend the time to face chat and to call each other. And we would talk almost as long as one, both of us were awake, we would almost talk all the time. So you're going to get really good at being very good at communicating and just understanding each other's personalities and listening to each other. It's going to be very, very beneficial for just your overall on-phone relationship or just the times when you're apart. It's going to be so much better. And if you're surviving in this long-distance relationship, you're going to start realizing that 
you are totally committed to that other person because there's a pretty good chance that if they're going to be apart from you, they're going to find somebody else. (laughs) They're going to, if they really wanted to, they would pursue a different relationship, especially if they're in a different area. But once you start to communicate with them every day and you're apart from each other for a long time, or if you start out apart from each other, distance creates that little bit of gap. And if they're not committed to you, they're going to search for somebody who's more convenient. They're going to be more interested in convenience. So they'll let your relationship die and pursue somebody else. But if you're able to maintain a relationship long distance, that shows the true ability to which your you and your partner are committed to each other. And that'll really strengthen your relationship and just show that you're you're dedicated to the relationship, to one another, and you're just you're just smitten together. And not only will that help with your commitment to each other, that's going to completely extend your trust. Cause when you're in a long distance relationship, you kind of and and you do honestly commit to it, you do like put in the time you're willing to do it you have to trust your partner because if you don't trust them, you're just going to be sitting at home worrying, what are they doing? Who are they talking to? And it's going to be very stressful. So instead, if you stay at home, you're just, you're okay with it. You're saying, okay, I trust my partner and the decisions they're making. They're going to, you know, be trustful to me. They're going to be faithful to me. And you just start to develop this trust that's going to remain over the rest of your relationship unless one of you breaks it. If you're able to create that trust between each other, that really strengthens and leaves out the opportunity for those worries If, as opposed to if you are never apart, you're so used to being together that you don't know what it's like to be apart. You don't know how to react when your partner is, you know, having a night with the girls or having a night with the guys and they're out and about and you're like, oh my God, what are they doing? Are they cheating on me? Oh my God. But instead you're used to them being in a different place and you're like, okay, they're going to do what they're going to do, but they're still going to be faithful to me. So that's another part of why long distance relationships are so important. Now, that being said, long distance relationships are really hard for people that are more physical. But on the other hand, you'll start to see that if you are in this LDR, you're not in it for just the physicality. You're not just an object. You're not just a sex object. You are not just friends with benefits. You are actually this person with emotions and you you care about your partner You and they care about you. And you start to rely on each other for this love and you're being romantic. You have romantic gestures and you can interact with each other in more than just physical touch. And when you do take this time to just shift over to another world, take your time away from your partner or even if you start out away from your partner, you start to realize more about yourself and you get used to being in your own skin worrying about yourself and it's almost a breath off of your shoulders you feel like okay i don't have to worry about this person because i know they got this at home and that is so strengthening for your relationship because once you do get back together you start to worry less about what they're doing and what you're doing and just you're in your own body you're in your own skin so when you're away you start to learn things about yourself you start to understand okay this is who i am And if you're not spending all of your time with your significant other, you start to find who you are as a person. Even if you've already found yourself, we all change through the ages. And if you've been together with your your partner for 10 plus years, if you take like just a month away from them, you'll start to see, okay, this is how I act. This is what I like. And it seems really crazy because, you know, at that point in our lives, we should we should know. We should know who we are, but it's constantly changing. So having that LDR allows us to reconfigure it with ourselves to check in and just see, okay, who are, who are we right now? And that's really important because that is helping us with our independence in our relationship. 
And of course, there will be times when even if you're apart, you're going to be dependent on your partner, whether it's watering the plants, taking care of a pet, to helping you get home safely, or just depending on them to have a conversation once once a day, once a week, whatever it is, you're depending on them in one way or another, but you're also depending on yourself. And that's called being interdependent. You depend both on your own, your own self, and on your partner for what you two do together. And that's a big part of that. Ooh, that Venn diagram, it's coming back again. And you're just capable of supporting yourself, but there's other places where you're like, okay, I need my partner for emotional support or just whatever it is that you need to build your relationship. And when you're in a long distance relationship, you know that there's going to be a time when you're going to be together again. And even though you may not know exactly when that is, you have something to look forward to. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see you. It's going to be like one month. Or you're going to be like, oh my God, I don't know what it's going to be, but you, I'm, oh, I'm so excited to see you. And you have this thing that you and your partner are working towards together. You're both in it to win it. You're both in it to be together. And it's just really exciting. And you have so much to talk about too because you're never together. Or maybe you are together sometimes, but you have more to talk about because you're not constantly together. So those were just a couple of benefits of being in a long-distance relationship. Coming up next, we're going to talk about some of the not-so-beneficial parts of being in a long-distance relationship. So I will see you after the break. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. And thank you for sticking with me today on the Relationship Podcast. We just talked about some of the pros of being in a long-distance relationship. And now we're going to talk about some of the cons, some of the the downsides of being in a long-distance relationship. And there's a lot of ways that being in an LDR, a long-distance relationship, can strengthen the relationship as a whole, but there's other things that you have to consider before you actually go into them. And things you have to consider if you want this to work out, you need to be able to handle it. Now, keep in mind that one of the things you need to be mindful about is that the traveling is going to be tiresome. You may be traveling two hours, you may be traveling an hour, If you're driving, it's even so stressful, especially if you're driving through traffic. I know what it's like to drive at five o'clock to go see your boyfriend, you know, maybe across the other side of the, the state or across, you know, into the city. And you're stuck in traffic every single time you want to go see them. And you're like, ah, how? I mean, I can't handle this traffic every single day or every single time I want to see them. And it becomes very stressful because you're, you're like, okay, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And it becomes stressful for both of you because you're going to be sitting in hours of traffic just to see each other. And then there's people that live across the country from each other. And they're going to have to go through hours of driving or hours of flights and going through the airport. And 
even if you love going through the airport, especially now with with viruses happening and with COVID-19, we're experiencing this stress of, okay, do I get on a flight? Do I risk it and go into an airport? Do I go into an airplane where there's just, there's bacteria everywhere to do what, like there's so many flights canceling. And even if there weren't the virus right now, you still have that, that thing where flights are delayed, flights are canceled, you have to get to the airport, maybe you have to keep your car there. And then on top of that, you have going out of the country. You're going to go visit somewhere across the sea or some somewhere across just away outside of your country's borderlines and you have to have a passport or a visa. You have to have a reason for going there. Every time you fly there, maybe it's 16 hours to get there, 16 hours there and back. You have to fill out paperwork. You have to go through customs. Um, you have to figure out how you're going to get from the airport to wherever you're staying. Oh yeah, and you have to actually stay somewhere. Maybe your partner doesn't have a place that will fit for you, or maybe that's not what their culture does. Maybe their culture and their family would be uncomfortable with that. So now you have to rent, a, you have to invest in a hotel room, or maybe you have to stay in an Airbnb. That's all going to cost you a lot of money. And you're also going to be expected to go on dates, and then you're going to go back to being alone eventually. But oh yeah, did I mention money? There's going to be the issue of either gas or plane tickets. You're going to have to pay. Even if you're just going an hour away from where you live, it's going to cost you around $13 just to get there and back. And you also have the idea of if you're going you know, across the country, if you're going to take a plane to go across the country, it's going to be anywhere from $100 to like $600. You have layovers. You're going to be very tired. Um, you have to worry about luggage, packing stuff. And if you're going across seas, it can get up to $2,000 just to just for a round trip to go to another country. And then on top of that, you have going to stay in a hotel. So you have to think about your stay. You have to have, so if you're going across country, you have to think about plane ticket. You have to think about luggage, um, gifts that you might bring to your, your significant other and also their family because in a lot of cultures, that's very important. And if you have to stay somewhere else other than wherever your significant other will be, you have to pay for that as well. You'll also have to be thinking about the the boarding, so how much money you're spending on food, as well as things you might purchase there and the dates you're going to go on with your significant other and things you might purchase for them there. So there's lots of expenses that go into that, especially because when you, you are in a long distance relationship, and you do see each other, you're going to want to spend a lot of time doing a lot of meaningful things in the short time you spend together. So those dates go from visits to McDonald's in, in a normal, not in a normal, in a short distance relationship, but in a long distance relationship, that's like a five-star dinner and a steak or a sashimi or something really exciting. Um, but instead, now you're spending tons of money. And so you have to think if you're financially able to handle this long distance relationship. And eventually when you do find that you want to pursue a an everlasting relationship with this person, you have to spend money on green cards and the I believe it's the K1 visa I want to say. I've only learned it from 90 Day Fiance, so I'm not really sure. But they have a specific visa, and that costs money. You have to think about what it's going to add on to your your plate if they're going to come stay with you, unable to have a job because of that visa. It doesn't permit them to have a job, and so you have to be responsible financially for them and yourself and whatever family you might have. And there's also the idea that you're not going to see each other every day. Even if you're FaceTiming, it's not going to feel the same. You're going to feel like there's something missing, especially if you're one of those physical touch love language people. You're going to feel so so out of touch with that person because you feel like there's just that 
that part of your life is missing. So you have to be prepared for not seeing each other every day. And you might, you really might not see them even if you are FaceTiming or video chatting because of the time differences. You have to keep in mind that there will be time differences, that there, even if it's one hour apart, that can affect your sleep schedule. Or if it's 16 hours, you may only talk for four, there may only be an overlap of four hours a day where you are actually talking to each other. There is also a language barrier if you're if you're going to talk to somebody outside of the country or who has another language than you speak even if they speak English or or whatever language you speak they're going to either not speak it as well as you or their family and friends aren't going to be able to speak at the same level as you do and this kind of creates some some uncomfortness especially if you want to go meet their family or if or if they want to come meet yours, there may be misunderstandings because of this. You may just have a little bit of language issues that create some confusion. And there's also going to be cultural differences. You have to actually learn their culture. You have to understand what their family expects of you, what their traditions are, and how you're supposed to interact in their country as well as they should plan to interact how you you sh- th- how they should interact in your country. So there's a lot of it going on with traditions and culture, and it really just depends on who you're pursuing and in what in what country. Because if you're going to be somebody in in America who wants to date somebody in Germany, there may be different ideas for how you're supposed to act with each other, how you're supposed to greet the family, how you're supposed to interact with the family and what you're going to be saying to each other. And also, if you're able to speak with the family, um, it puts a lot of pressure onto whichever whichever partner is going to be the one translating because they have to translate everything. And I've even run into issues with that myself where I've been invited and then uninvited to family events because they realize they'd have to translate everything for their family. So it can be kind of stressful for whichever partner is the designated translator. And you might even experience some trust issues, especially if one of you tends to be more jealous than the other. They're going to, whichever of you are more jealous, you're going to just be concerned about where people, where your partner is going, what they're doing, and kind of when, who they're hanging out with. And there's always going to be that feeling of, well, what if they're seeing somebody else behind my back? And the way to get around that is really just to build trust with your partner and to start relying on each other. Um, but you just have to be prepared for that kind of that loneliness, that that potential that maybe everything is not as it seems, but you have to hope for the best. So coming up in the next segment, we're going to talk about some of... Well, I'm going to give you guys some tips for what to do if you are in a long distance relationship. So stay tuned and we will be right back. Are you looking to learn more about the latest trends from the fitness world? Are you confused by all the different trends that are out there? The GSMC Fitness Podcast is the place for you. The GSMC Fitness Podcast is the place to come for people of all skill and interest levels. Join us as we explore the latest trends in the fitness world. Does that new exercise really work? Should I try yoga? Whatever your question, chances are good you'll find an answer on the GSMC Fitness Podcast.
So originally I was going to do a topic on mindful texting, but I think it's more important that we talk about some tips for if you are in a long distance relationship or if you're planning to pursue a long distance relationship because we just got done with talking about some of the pros and cons of being in an LDR, a long distance relationship. And I think after talking about that, it might be more important for me to discuss some of the ways that you can actually make it work and some of the the things that you can do when you are in a long distance relationship. So I've talked about some of the awesome things about being in an LDR. I've talked about some of the not so awesome things of being in an LDR. So what if you find somebody that you are head over heels for, you are just totally smitten with, and you are at least an hour apart. I'd say a long distance relationship is about an hour plus apart, whether it's an hour to the other side of the country, it's it's going to be just kind of a struggle, um, and increasingly with the more time that you are apart. So what are some ways that you can make this work out? And one of the top ways I would say is to avoid, try to avoid a lot of communication. So don't don't plan to talk constantly. Don't focus on being in constant communication and in constant accompaniment with your partner because you're going to come off as possessive or maybe clingy. And I mean, you really don't have to talk for most of the day as long as you're just keeping up with each other. Remember that if you're spamming them, if you're sending multiple messages while they're not responding and it's just abnormal for you to do that otherwise, it's going to be really stressful for your partner and they're going to feel kind of turned off by that because they're going to feel like you're being very clingy and very needy when they're not able to give you that that reciprocation that you need. So remember that just, you know, be yourself be normal and just accept that they're going to have times where they're not available and you're going to have times that you're not available and just try to not be super excessive when it comes to communication. And maybe not so much turned off, but more like suffocated. Your partner will feel like they're they're just very suffocated around your need to be interacting with them when they may not be able to to give you all of the attention that you need. So just keep that in mind. And it's good to also see it as a learning curve for you and your partner, whether you're starting off never even meeting to, like me, but or if you're just going to go on a journey for maybe a month or a week or whatever it is, see it as a time period in which you're you're going to accept that you're apart. You're going to understand how both yourself and your partner works when you're on your own, but you're still in a relationship. And you're going to learn a lot about yourself as well as about how your relationship works and the commitment that you two show towards each other. Now, before embarking on this adventure that either one of you are going to take, whether it's both of you or just one, you want to discuss some of the the outlines of how you see your relationship working when you're apart. So set some rules, come up with a plan on maybe how you're going to talk to each other, how you're going to interact. If you are both into online gaming, that's perfect because you can meet each other, maybe not in real life, but you're going to meet each other in the online world and you can find tons of games to play online. Even if you aren't as into gaming, you can play things like, you can play Pictionary, you can play Uno, there's even online Cards Against Humanity. You can look up tons of games that you and your partner can play together that are just card games that you would play in person, but now it's online. So there's a pl- there's so many great ways to interact, and you can even say, okay, I'm going to call at this time of the week or this time of day, and you, you figure out each other's schedules. You try to figure out each other's time zone differences if you have them. And that really helps with just maintaining a relationship and keeping in steady flow. And with that, be mindful of what you're actually saying to them. Because if you continuously every day always say hi or just good morning, 
it's going to be very monotonous and throw this feeling of, okay, they don't actually care. They're just doing this because of repetition and they're on autopilot in our relationship. So be thoughtful about what you say to each other and keep in mind that you should be creative in the way that you communicate and try to do it often, not often like every single day, but try to do it on a regular schedule. So that you can realize the patterns in each other's day and you can get used to. And that actually helps build trust as well because you start to see, okay, they're available this time of the day on these days. And you see, okay, they're not actually doing anything weird. They're just doing their thing. They're at work. They're at school. um, They're doing their hobby, whatever it may be. And even though you may be miles and miles apart, don't forget to talk dirty to each other because... That that sexual tension is just going to keep you guys bound to each other. It's going to create this magnetism that's going to help your relationship stay together. And you're going to remind each other that your relationship is more than just text and more than just video talk. But it's also that that primal desire for each other. You're going to have the reason to keep coming back to each other. And it's just these flames burning and you want to send seizing, teasing texts to each other is going to be so suspenseful and it's going to make it when the times that you are together so much more fiery and magical. And also, if you're going to go out with your friends or go to a club, maybe you're going drinking, just make sure that you communicate it with your partner, especially if it's something that they've expressed that they don't feel quite comfortable with or that they just express that they want to know about it either you know don't do it or just express to them that hey I'm going out tonight um I'll text you when I'm back home and just leave it at that because I think that the the ability to be free is very important in a relationship right and the ability to go out and have fun with friends as long as you're being faithful to your partner is perfectly healthy for a relationship And if you do have a partner who is far away from you and they tend to go out sometimes, just be knowledgeable that they are still putting an effort into your relationship and that you still can trust them even if they're going out. But also it is totally, totally a great idea just to be acknowledgeable of your partner's feelings and actually message them, let them know I'm going out for the night and let them know when you come home so that they know that you're safe. Um, That's very important to build trust. I also really recommend having a voice chat with each other and watching a movie at the same time or a documentary or just a video on YouTube. Even if it's a Netflix series binge, you're going to be able to find a time at least once a week where you can sit down and watch a movie together And you can pause it and start it whenever you like, have a snack together. You can just be on different sides of the world and enjoy each other's company. Even if you're not there side by side, you can watch a movie together, have a glass of wine. Um, It's going to be really actually fun because you're still watching the same movie even though you're in a different space. I also recommend FaceTiming or video chatting while eating. There's something a little bit just intimate about having a meal with your partner, even if one of you isn't eating. Um, It's just nice to be able to contact each other and enjoy a meal as opposed to if you're just in your room eating alone. It's kind of sad, right? So um, you want to be able to enjoy it with someone else and who better than your partner. So you can video chat them while you're eating And hopefully that won't be weird or awkward for you. Hopefully you're past that in your relationship. But you should also be able to enjoy your own journey. Be able to take time for yourself. And whether you're with friends or family, know that you're you're still an independent person and you're going to enjoy your life. And you don't have to stay reliant on your partner while you're on your journey. Yes, you are in this committed relationship. Yes, you love them. And you are going to go home to them. You're going to talk to them all the time. But you should also take time to not worry about that, to be concerned with yourself and to have fun. That's not saying you should be unfaithful to your partner and to, to mess around with other people, but you should be able to adventure 
and to do what you like to do, which is really important when you are in a long distance relationship because you can help yourself focus on your own needs and your own independence. So that is all I have on long distance relationships for today. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the long awaited answer. Why do we not give boys flowers? And that'll be our final segment for the show. So be sure to stay tuned. Thank you so much. And I will see you after the break. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Relationship Podcast. Last week, we discussed some of the different opportunities to give women flowers and different flowers that are good to give women for different occasions. And we just finished talking about a lot of different things about long distance relationships. So now we're going to talk about why don't men receive flowers? And that goes back to history of women being drawn to flowers because they are they're really a symbol of romance and when they got a flower floral arrangement from a significant other this is a romantic gesture and it it has just gone back since like the beginning of time so in earlier ages flowers were known to be soft to the touch they have a gentle scent and they're just so colorful and vibrant so for men, this is very un- unpleasing because they're manly and they're strong and they're like, Arr. um, this is in past times. So they're expected to be very harsh and not, not reminiscent of a flower. Just like we have seen in the past that men don't go to spas, they don't get their nails done and they shouldn't care so much about fashion. But as time and evolution happens, we start to see that men do and should care for their appearance. And personally, I find a man more attractive when they do care for their appearance. And so with times changing, they have that more care for themselves. They have more touch with their emotions, they're more they're more in touch with their emotions. We start to see that men are more accepting of flowers. They're more willing to go to the spa. They actually get their nails done even if they don't put color on it. They care about that that extra touch of cleanliness and hygiene. So, why on earth would a woman bring men flowers? Do they actually like that? And surveys have suggested that men do appreciate flowers as a as a gift, even if it's from even if it's in a heterosexual relationship and the woman is bringing it, the woman is bringing it to them. And one reason they might be off put by it is because society has always taught us that women are the ones that are supposed to receive flowers and they're supposed to come from the men, that this is a very feminine gift to give somebody. But as time changes and we start to broaden our minds about gifts we can give each other, we should keep in mind that men are just as appreciative of flowers as as women are. And they're just such a, they're such an inexpensive way to show that you love your partner 
and that you you find that you found a gift for them you thought hey this flower reminded me of you or my love for you or you just want to surprise them on their birthday their your anniversary or maybe they just got a promotion at work um perhaps somebody died in their family their side of the family and or maybe they're just experiencing some grief they lost their job Flowers are an amazing way to portray emotions for somebody and to show that you love them and care for them. Even though they're not forever lasting, they will eventually wilt. They're aesthetically pleasing. You can display them in the home and they're kind of a constant reminder for the time that they're alive that your significant other is thinking of you and they are there for you. And if you think about it, men are always the ones sending flowers or giving flowers to women. And it's just kind of a nice twist. It's a nice surprise to show up and give them flowers. They're going to be like, what? And they might be a little perturbed at first. They might be a little bit like, okay, this is a flower. Why are you giving it to me? But at the same time, they're going to be like, okay, my heart's pounding. I just got some flowers. And for most men, this is actually such a good surprise and just a... It's a great way to kind of show like, hey, we're in this together and we're both equals here. So you deserve some flowers too, okay, man? And like, it's just such a great way to surprise your partner. But if you're giving a flower to a man, you can't just assume they're going to like the same flowers as women. Most men um, prefer like kind of darker shades of flowers. Now, a lot of women prefer like whites and pinks. And I know myself personally, I love white and pink, but, and I like to choose yellow for like my mom and stuff. So definitely like women like those more vibrant shades, but for men, they might prefer darker colors as opposed to maybe pastels or just vibrant bright things so if you're looking to give them something i would give them something more neutral such as an orchid that's either maybe i mean white still works for men because white is a very neutral color obviously it's white so it doesn't have any color to it but if you're going for maybe purple they orchids come in crimson and even Even, like, red roses are great for a guy because roses, as we talked about in the last podcast, are the biggest symbol of romance, the biggest symbol of love. So, regardless of boy or girl, roses are very, very universally taken as romance and, like, a heated love, a heated passion for somebody. There is even something called, um, I think it's anth bouquets or the flamingo flower or even there's specifically called the boy flower would be a fantastic gift to give your boyfriend or your husband because hello it's a boy flower and it has a very very obvious shape and color and that's very recommended for men um, for a gift for a man And you can even do like birds of paradise because those are things that are seen in the wild. You can find them very naturally and they fit well into a home and it doesn't seem as feminine. It seems more like a gesture of thankfulness and can fit into the home. And it's like, okay, there's flowers here. Yay. And also the birds of paradise or you could also call them crane flowers. Those have a very bold appearance and texture so those will work really great for a man cave or just a a a place in a man's heart and you could also even do if you want to kind of like keep from the flowers and go towards just a plant i highly recommend a bamboo a bamboo plant which is something i'm currently trying to grow in my own place and my boyfriend and i each picked out one And it's supposed to bring good fortune for a couple if you both have one and you grow them together. So those are a great idea for maybe some things that you could send or give to your boyfriend or your husband or maybe just a guy you're interested in if you want to give them a plant or a flower. And there's different occasions that you could give them flowers for 
or plants. Um, it could be anniversaries. You could do their birthday. Just things like, like I said, if they get a raise at their job, if they get a promotion, um, anything just for something. Maybe they received an award. It's very good to just give them as an achievement gift. If you want to say, I'm sorry, flowers are also a totally acceptable way to be like, I'm sorry, I did not do the right thing here. I kind of screwed up. Here's a flower. Please accept my apology. Maybe will not always work depending on what you did, but that is a good way to show like, hey, I'm, I'm sorry and I'm willing to prove it. Other things are like Father's Day. If you are dating somebody or married to somebody who is a father, Father's Day is a great day to give them a plant or a flower, especially if they have a green thumb or care about the look of their home. Even Valentine's Day is just another great day to share gifts, of course, but this is just another opportunity to actually show your love through some flowers. But as a reminder, flowers are such a great way to express love for your, for your SO, for your partner, for your boyfriend, husband, somebody that you have a major crush on. It's, it's such a surprise. It's so different. And they are just going to feel like flustered and excited, like, oh my gosh, flowers. Um, and I don't know. It's just, a, it's, it's really pretty for them too. Cause obviously men like pretty things. A lot of them like pretty women. A lot of them like other pretty men or whoever you are. Obviously, they're into pretty things if they're into you, right? So (laughs) express your love and care for somebody through these flowers. And thank you so much for listening into the podcast today. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that you are all safe today and safe always. Maybe you should try sending some flowers to somebody, even if it's not somebody you're in love with. You can definitely try to send some flowers to your mom. Your mom deserves some flowers. Come on. Or your dad. Um, Try sending flowers to somebody, even if there's no reason to. Just do it. So thank you for listening to the GSMC Relationship Podcast. This was brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Podcast Network. Please, please, please subscribe to the show and write a super nice review because I love hearing those. And also, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll be taking any questions there. And be sure to stay healthy because we still have virus on our hands. So make sure to keep that social distancing, wear a mask, stay healthy, stay safe, and have a fabulous day. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.